What is going on, everybody? It is a bonus episode of Pop Culture Crisis, or in this case, it's a movie review, and we are going to be reviewing the movie Father Stew, which uh, I just went and saw myself. I'm Brett, and I'm here with my co-host, who is going to talk with me about it. Introduce stuff, please. It's Mary. Hello. We're going to talk a bunch about, uh, I I pulled up a bunch of the information regarding, uh, because this is based on a true story. And what I've pulled up here is, so this movie is uh, written and directed by a woman named Rosalind, uh, is it Rosalind Ross? Um, And we are going to give spoilers, guys, just uh, just a heads up. We're going to give spoilers, talk about it. And Mary said something very um, uh, profound almost for her. And she goes, if I didn't like it so much, I feel like I would have more to say. But we did like this movie a lot. Like yeah. a lot, a lot. Like uh, so, if you want a little bit of back uh, background, Mary comes from uh, a religious background. I do not, and this is the beauty um, of something like this: is that if both people can go and see it from different um, perspectives and still come out enjoying it, that's what you want uh, in a film production. At least I look at it that way: that somebody of faith can go watch a movie like this and really enjoy it and really feel like they were both entertained or uh, I guess not just entertained, but really that if it spoke to them, but then somebody who doesn't come from that background can also go uh, and do the same thing. And I think that's important when you're making movies. Right. When a movie is, uh, I don't know if you want to call it faith based or that's their words. Basically faith is a central theme in the movie. It's important that it can resonate with people who may have a background, but also the uninitiated Mm. to the subject entirely. And I think from my perspective as a lifelong Catholic, it did a good job. Do you think it did a good job with that? As as someone who is not, uh, who was raised, you know, uh, nominally, uh, yeah, I went to church. uh, uh, There was periods where I would go more regularly, but uh, never considered himself to be uh, vastly religious and is, of course, not uh, in the faith now, but remains open to whatever possibilities, uh, if you call that agnostic, Mm -hmm. whatever it will. Uh, To me, what's important in a movie like this is that uh, it, it wasn't just about the religion aspect, it's the it's redemption, and that's a universal theme that needs no um, background in, in faith, but it just happens to be a part of this movie, uh, and done so in a way that I truly believe that anyone with an open mind can go into and enjoy. It was not heavy-handed at all, which is where the worry always tends to come for movies like this, that it's going to be very, very ham-fisted in its approach to dealing with the religious aspects, which this did not do. It presented them, but it did so as the framework of who this char- of what this character would grow to become, um, kind of the backdrop, but it wasn't what he was about entirely. It's about right. his redemption from a self-destructive lifestyle um, and his own, you know, his own issues, um, and then finding faith and growing right. into it and really telling a really a really inspirational story. Right. The movie isn't about Catholicism. It's not about the priesthood it, or the faith or prayer or anything. It is about it is primarily about a man. It's a personal story mm-hmm. and it's it's a story about his personal relationships with people and with God. It's not centrally about faith. And, and there is, uh, like I said, uh, to me, if, if I was to to name one topic that is the most important aspect, it is redemption, because this comes mm-hmm. for all characters, almost almost all characters that are central to the beginning of the movie, meaning um, there's Mark Wahlberg, who plays the the title character of Father Stuart Long. That's, his, that's, the, that's what this person's name was. That's a, did we mention that this was based on a true story? I think we yes, did. Yes, we okay. did. So his name was Father Stuart Long. Uh, in the in the movie Bill Long, which is his father is played by Mel Gibson, and then his wife uh, his wife his mother was uh, Kathleen Long, and that was played by Jackie Weaver. And it's really about redemption for all of them uh, mm-hmm. in many ways. Uh, the his mother and his father, like you would have assumed, uh, like somebody like me who's not, uh, if I was going into this point, would have assumed that he came from a religious household and then he finds his way back to faith. But that's not really what this is. His dad actually laughs at the idea of him um, joining the priesthood later on in the movie and his dad has his own path of redemption um both in reconciling his uh his marriage with with his wife uh and then also with um his own issues with substance abuse but his son's journey leads him down to his own path of redemption and that was really beautifully done uh, right, in and my then opinion. His, his mother as well expressed extreme dissatisfaction and even uh disdain for yeah him considering the priesthood even um 
and yeah, the idea was... that he could have a relationship with a spiritual mother, meaning the mother of God, she found that laughable. And I, they incorporated her her story of redemption as well, and then that also culminated in the end of, in his his parents getting back together. Yes, also, I think that's what we're supposed to uh, like. Uh, I don't know if that's like it's never implicitly said that they are, but they're very clearly. Yeah, uh, they have reconnected in a right. way that they had lost years prior. And like I said, none of this needs to be done. Like it's, the framework of this movie is through religion, but to me, right. it's just I I think of life in the in this in the basis of the individual, and I see beautifully com complex individuals having complex stories told about their life. Uh, and it starts what, what's what I thought was great was first of all. He he, uh, he is very clearly, um, he's having a hard time letting go. He, he was a boxer. Um, he doesn't want to let go of that. He moves out to Hollywood. He thinks he's going to be an actor. And he's kind of on this aimless path where he doesn't know what he wants to be. He knows he wants to be an actor. He knows he wanted to be a boxer, but nothing's quite working out. And he, um, what happens is, uh, what happens to many men is they, they, they find someone and they, and they fall in love with that person. And, and I don't know if that's, if we would call this, I would call this love between him and the, the young lady that leads him to his faith, uh, which he meets working in a deli. <laughs> of mm -hmm. all places, um, beautifully portrayed, in my opinion, about uh, the character's name is Carmen, and it's portrayed by a woman named, an actress named Teresa Ruiz, or Ruiz who I cannot sing the praises of enough. Um, in this, uh, I see the, the, the Carmen as his call to action in a way, as in that she leads him to believe that he can uh, change himself, which he then uh, finds through God, but she draws him there. Right. Obviously not through, he, he did not have a uh, very, um, um, moral reasons for wanting to meet her at first but he you know he, he did not uh, they were not the most uh, catholic of uh, of in uh, of uh, intentions that he had but he proves that he wants to be a part of her life and what she does very well this actress is she embodies a warmth uh and a sense of character there's a she 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 talks you know she speaks to him in a way where she challenges him when he's when he's laying it on thick uh she comes off as a woman who a bad boy looking uh, who who could be on the path to redemption would turn his life around for and if that hadn't worked uh that early on in the movie it could have felt um as if it he got there uh inorganically yeah it's so key that he had this relationship with this woman because uh i think a shallow relationship would be a woman coming into his life and deciding, I'm going to fix this guy. Yeah. I'm going to change him and turn him around. And now he's my project. But um, the way that this relationship was framed was that she knew that this guy was imperfect and uh, that he was immature in in a lot of ways, but she didn't make it her miss her mission to change him. She instead just engaged with him as a human being and with all of his his flaws and his mis misconceptions of her faith and just you know brought him along which to me at, like from an outsider perspective i could see like may maybe this is my own failings but like if i was to see like you know if i'm her and i see somebody who's clearly doing this um for reasons that have nothing to do with the faith uh it sh it proves that she has a, a level of patience and a level of grace about her that you know she could feel as if he's uh disgracing what she believes in but instead she sees him for his flaws uh and prays for you know and essentially you know wants him wants well for him and does, like you said accepts him flaws and all he is far from his most reformed self when they finally do uh become an, a, a couple um, and she accepts him, I guess the term is warts and all, that he's not the perfect human being, but she sees him as somebody who's working to better himself, working to develop a close, a closer relationship with God, which in the story, in the consensus of this movie is what she values. Uh, and I think she does this role beautifully and it helps Mark Wahlberg really find that character. And one of the things that I found uh, in a lot of the reviews was they're saying that Mark Wahlberg was... Um, 
poorly cast, and I disagree. No. Uh, I think he is fantastic in this role. What are their reasons for saying uh, th that? This is just the general consensus that's given uh, as far as critical response on Wikipedia. Mm. Uh, but in a lot of the reviews that I saw said that it was it was good in the fact that it wasn't, uh, wasn't heavy-handed with its messaging, but they felt Mark Wahlberg was, mis was miscast. And I really think that he is fantastic in this role. Uh, he yeah. there's an earnestness and a level of um, he embodies the character in a way that I felt really rang true where in places it could have been he goes from boxer to down and out um, has been to want to be actor to deli meat worker to uh, a person pursuing uh, kind of a ham fisted approach at faith because he loves a girl because uh, he wants to impress a girl to a man who truly does become one one with in the in this in the means of this story with God, which is the you know what he's looking to become, right? Am I am I interpreting yeah, that? He's, yeah. he's looking to develop a closer relationship with God, and he does this all beautifully, and it's done in a way that if you are uh, a, a Catholic or if you are not, you can look at this as a man on a path of bettering himself and growing. Uh, and I don't think that needs to be uh, th that. There's no um, inherent religion that needs to be involved in telling that story. It just so happens to be part of this story, uh, and it's beautifully told uh, right. by Rosalind Ross, who directed and wrote this movie. The the instrument of his transformation is important to. It's important to recognize it's his suffering. Yes, that that changed him and led to his redemption. That is. I think a central theme to it, to the movie as well, because not only him, but everyone around him is, is suffering in their own ways. Yep. And he even comes to a point at a low point where he feels like this is being inflicted on him yeah. by God. Um, and I think the, the major turning point is when he gets into his motorcycle accident. Yes. Um, and one thing that's beautiful about this is he takes pot shots at God early on, but it doesn't feel like overnight he just suddenly found, mm -hmm. uh, found himself different. It's a gradual process that I was kind of waiting for that moment where he realizes it and it's like done with large sweeping score. And it's not. It's, uh, it's a gradual process that's almost told uh, in a... It, it's not even a, in a super linear fashion because I always imagine it, and this is just my ADHD brain, like when I think of these things, I think of somebody having that one moment where they really believe, where they found themselves and you can think to it back and you can point to it on a calendar and you'd be like, this is the moment when I found myself. And that's not really the way most people grow into the people they're going to become. It's a culmination of many different things, which they tell as a story beautifully in this movie. It's the car accident. Uh, it's, it's the deli job. It's the getting in bar fights. It's the the meeting the guy at the bar who they never uh i mean i was the, Maybe there was that, some symbolism there yeah, right okay yeah. um the, so he meets a guy in a bar who helps uh you know guide him towards some um a different way of thinking it's all of these little things mm -hmm. combined together in a in my opinion beautifully paced story that never lets you feel like it's slowing down. It's a it's a very uh, honest, real pace as to how you like, for something that has to be told in two hours, you feel like you went on this journey with him and you didn't fast forward through certain parts. I think there was only one montage in the whole movie that was like when he's he's in, he finally becomes part of the priesthood uh, of the seminary, right? And mm -hmm. he's he's in Bible study and it's that, it's like there's a, a, a relatively short montage of him in Bible yeah. study and interacting with, uh, the other individuals in the seminary with him yeah and part of that montage also i remember was him contemplating beating one of his fellow seminarians to a pulp which they but then deciding to cross himself instead yes they they tell that in a very funny way that they, they <laughs> first they show it as if he actually did that uh and then they they kind of re uh rewind and show you that he hasn't quite made that decision yet and then he crosses himself yes uh I, and that's just that's beautiful i think it, they did like a fantastic job of just subverting so many expectations even after his um motorcycle accident scene when he tumbled down onto the ground i was like oh okay this is where he uh has his injury and he he gets sick and he deteriorates from here right yep. but that wasn't the case he he was on crutches after that after that accident i believe and you know in a very non-linear way and um cinematically put together uh way he he shifted towards uh 
this realization that he wanted to become a priest. And at first when we walked out, I remember I, I said, I didn't see exactly where this idea was planted and how he, you know, began to be inclined toward the priesthood at all. Yeah. I didn't get that. But then you you said that um it, it was because, you know, no one's story in real life is linear like that. And no. that makes so much sense that, you know, they wouldn't make it this one and done thing that, you know, bad thing happens and then realization is had and sunshine and rainbows is the end. There's nothing about the beginning or the middle or the end of this movie that is idealized. Yeah, that, I was just saying, like, the, the Hollywood-esque idea would be to have a big sweeping score as he's mm -hmm. uh, reveling in some uh, moment back at the accident site yeah. where he finds himself and he finds God. That, that's and something they, that so many faith-based, faith-based, quote-unquote, yeah. films get so wrong is that they do that. Yeah. And it's just not realistic. It's not personal to anybody watching. That That's almost, um, th that's less a problem with the, with the faith part of it but it's more of a part uh, uh that that is an issue with the directorial yeah poor writing it's poor writing and it's like low budgeting it's not how the world works yeah when you're going through something as meaningful and deep as uh, uh as finding yourself whether it's spiritually whether it's finding yourself like uh whether you're you're deciding it they do the same thing where it's like uh i, I read a lot of like um like when people the, there's those uh, very few people who are very successful like i knew what i wanted to do from the age of eight i'm like yeah probably but you probably had some uh other ideas about maybe you wanted to do it's like, the world doesn't happen yeah. that cleanly. no one is without doubts and also it's so important that they don't do a stereotypical uh plot point by plot point story yep. because the people every person watching is in a in their own you know story yeah. where they haven't reached a a conclusion yet yep. so how would it, uh, a story that is so cut and dry with uh, a clear uh, rising action, then the then the climax and the the conclusion that's very satisfying. How would that really speak to anybody it would, in and, their in the middle of their struggle? And and I'm guilty. Like I'm one of those people where because uh, just doing this show, I loved movies. I loved the art of storytelling growing up, and always found the real world a bit of a, 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 a had a way of beating me down when things wouldn't work that way, when, you know, when I couldn't come to my uh, realizations with a large crescendo and symphonic orchestra mm -hmm. playing in the background. Um, one thing to be said is like, when I, uh, uh, I've been very open, uh, I'm not going to get heavily into this, but uh, with finding sobriety is that you just kind of one day realize that you need help and you need to find that help. But for me, it wasn't some big moment where I, um, where I was at, I mean, I hit rock bottom, but it's not like there was a moment where in that moment I knew that I was, uh, that the next day I had to go do something or else it was, uh, for a long time, uh, I was aware that eventually I would need to get help, uh, and eventually slowly things will be taken from you little by little until you finally make the decision to go do it. It's rarely ever so grandiose as, uh, the people who get, I mean, uh, those who get into a car wreck and realize that they have to change their life and then actually do. It's usually, uh, a, a world that beats you down, uh, that you have to find your way to that type of a decision, but that doesn't play the same way on screen that it does with the uh, unrealistic storytelling which they managed to avoid in this movie so yes. that is a credit to Rosalind Ross who both directed and wrote this movie this is her first um directing credit uh, she has like a couple other like minor uh writing credits a show called matador which i knew about but never saw uh another thing that uh it was like a short film that i had never seen she is um the uh she is in a relationship with mel gibson who yes. is both um one of the main actors of this movie as well as uh, a financier on this film along with mark Wahlberg. so it's proof that nepotism doesn't always uh maybe this is her passion project and she you know well, he she helped. did a damn good job of it, and, and so she did a damn her. she did a, a fantastic job of like like i said they're like i was seeing issues that were listed here in father stew is saying the 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 issues they had with it were that uh he's hard working but miscast as father stew an issue compounded by the way that the movie fumbles its fact-based story like i don't know what they mean by fumbled 
Um, if they're looking for... Uh, Are they looking for 100% accuracy to the actual priest? Then that's, that's not how any biopic is done. No, it is not. <laughs> so I looked up... Uh, so it's a Stuart Ignatius Long, who lived from 1963 to 2014. He was a boxer and Catholic priest. And the, the name of the condition... So we didn't get into details, but basically what it is is that right after he finds his... Mark Wahlberg's character of Stuart finds his faith and he uh, becomes... Or he's not even quite yet a priest. He's in the... He's in the seminary. He develops a very serious degenerative muscle condition similar to ALS. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is called, I don't know if they mention it here in the, did they mention it in the, in the movie? They did. I, I couldn't remember I'm the not, name of it off the top of my either. head. Um, but basically it is that he gets a degenerative condition that he can't control and eventually he loses motor function yeah. and slowly his life, you know, uh, and it's told in a beautifully, um, it's nuanced and it's not like overnight he becomes um, um, handicapped, but it's slow and uh, he puts on more weight slowly. Uh, then uh, he, he starts to lose motor, fine motor function in his hands slowly. And you see, and this is why I think that they're wrong about Mark Wahlberg, you can see it, it is told very well through his um, facial expressions, the tr struggle he's having to deal with this as he's just found his faith and now he is being challenged so greatly again there's a scene and this uh, uh, this is why i think that they're wrong there's a scene in a church in in the in the in the uh, it was that the rectory is that the, i'm sorry is that what scene, the, the scene are you where he about? he starts he he uh he's basically asking god why he's done this to him which sounds like it would be very cheesy but he does it and it's just beautiful and real and he is bawling his eyes out while yeah. he's doing his thing. And it, you can, sp like, you watch enough movies, you can spot somebody who's been crying uh, a bunch. And this looks like they did it in uh, a very limited amount of takes. I don't know how much energy uh, an actor has to, ex I, I know it takes a lot of energy to have to expend uh, something like that uh, emotionally uh, and then come back from it and then start again. And it's beautifully done and it feels real. And that pain is all over his face as he realizes what's happening to him just after he feels like he's finally found his calling in his place in life yes and it, that that was really his fall from glory i think it was incredible how they changed his appear his appearance throughout the movie because he went from his boxing days where he was very young and ver like virile and muscular to gaining all of this weight and losing the function of his fingers and his his facial expressions yeah. um and his he was told that his best case scenario would be that he would have as long as a year, a year. before he needed help with his daily tasks. And, and, and they, the, one of the best ways that they show, and this is what I mean by understand, like this could have been very ham, like done very poorly. But uh, the the first way that you really see that the issues with the, the fine motor function, his hands, really um, coming coming to grips with that is when they shake hands in mm -hmm. in church, and he can't really do it because he can't open his palm, you know, his palm open to give somebody a traditional handshake. And you see that he looks up at the Monsignor uh, and then he looks at him and he kind of, fe you feel that pain on his face that he, you can tell that he's struggling. Um, and the, the, I, I did find the name of the condition. It's called inclusion body myo uh, my myotosis, myotosis, okay. myostis. Uh, so it's uh, IBM for short. It's an extremely rare and incurable autoimmune disease that mimics the symptoms of, of ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, by the time of his ordination in 2007, Long needed crutches and aid in, with him in walking. And in 2010, the, dia the diocese sent him uh, to Helena, where he lived and ministered at the Big Sky Care Center. So that was, they took that name. To, I was like, mm -hmm. Big Sky? Is that really the name of the... That was the actual name yeah. of, the, of the care center. So he 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 uh, basically he ministered right from his um, the facility yeah, it where looked he was like he was doing confessions from his the facility which where I, he was living. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yep. And I, I really do think that um, for as much credit as I'm giving Wahlberg, I think that his uh, that Mel Gibson deserves a lot of credit, too, for being a slow um, return to a uh, form of like, you know, he's he finds faith. I don't know if he fi necessarily found faith, but he found a reason to uh, to go on. They, I, they, it's not like they're approaching yeah. his at the same way of, of necessarily faith, but he finds a reason to be to to find uh, to love his wife to be with his wife again he found uh, some hope and redemption they, they showed him in a recovery program for alcoholism I, I, it was interesting how they treated uh like substance abuse because um 
it it was clear that Father Stu or you know, I drink. guess Stu uh, before he he did have a drinking problem, but he wasn't full blown alcoholic, yeah. and that that is how he ended up uh, injured in 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 the motorcycle accident. But it was more so just part of the story that he was looking in all of these different places yeah. for fulfillment and not finding it. Yeah. So, you know, he was looking for for fulfillment in drink, in fighting people, yep. in the glory of winning a fight, yep. in, uh, you know, bagging a woman and getting her attention. Yep. And then he still was not satisfied. And I think the relationship with Carmen was so important because in chasing after her affections her heart he realized that that still was not what he was looking for it wasn't after enough all. it wouldn't have been enough yeah and which would have uh say he say he ignores what he feels is a higher calling uh marries her which is what she had hoped uh but then he never feels fulfilled uh and then he's doing her a disservice by not you know, yes. being by not being able to give himself over fully to her. And like I said, if she hadn't been able to portray this character that way, I really do think it could have fallen apart because it would have been, you, uh, you need a character that looks, that, that inspires him in a way to really help him find himself to move to that next level of who he is. Uh, and she comes in at a very critical time in the movie where it could have started to feel like it's plotting uh, and going on too long. But she comes in and she changes the momentum of the film just like that from him being kind of down and out uh, and uh, and all over the place to being focused in trying to find uh, trying to find a way into into her heart, but still struggling because it's not like it's not like his life changed that night just by meeting her and he was suddenly a perfect person. Mm -hmm. And that felt very realistic to me that even though he was making an effort and he was doing everything he could to be the person she he felt she wanted, uh, he was still struggling with his demons. In, in this case, the his his bouts with his deals his issues with alcohol uh and it's done in a like i said i think a great way to explain is that it's there's a frenetic non-linear uh way of looking at somebody moving from one end of the spectrum as far as who they are to another and it, and it i feel like it really captures what the real world is like when you're on that journey when you're on your life journey uh, i mean maybe that's why it felt so real to me yeah I, his search for fulfillment in all of these different places where he's not finding it and also the like you said the the frenetic structure of the movie really had me thinking about uh, well, just why the, we're looking for yeah. escapism in all the things that he was like you know drinking in glory in relationships and like romance but also in in the movies we are watching why yeah. are we watching movies to escape i am guilty of that i don't think I, that this is that type of movie and it was amazing um i, I am like i when when uh, mary asked me what i would rate this movie i said eight out of ten because this is not a genre that i would typically what i would typically watch i do love escapist uh entertainment because that is to me uh i found it as a, a refuge growing up from a world that um if you if you're going to take the world for what it is and, and not ignore the you know uh, the world for in the good and the bad i do think that it's important for us to have a means of escaping it in a in a way that's healthy now there's such thing as too much but i think what this movie does is you can go into this movie and just have a good time yeah. and be told an incredible story without feeling like you're getting preached to right. and that is uh, i mean obviously people who are uh, of the faith will probably have an easier time just because ca Catholicism is such a central theme. But if you're a discerning moviegoer and all you want is to see somebody tell a, so, an incredible story told of redemption, then I think that you can uh, enjoy this movie as well. And that's uh, that's a credit to everyone involved. Right. I think it also is uh, pretty age appropriate for if, yeah. if children were to watch it with while still having some adult themes. It's good for the uninitiated, but also the initiated in faith and people who knew who Stuart Long was before, people who had no idea like me. I, I know that Wahlberg said that the, the diocese had an issue with the amount of swearing. And he yeah, said, look, it's important to the storytelling. I think that, um, that was framed as like the church has a big problem with Ma Mark Wahlberg. But really, it was just like, I'm sure that it would be their preference that he didn't use bad language in a movie. After wouldn't have felt all, as though, real yeah it, it it did serve the the plot actually yes. it, it, if, if it he's was like, not a necessary vulgarity at all if he's like i'm gonna kick your butt it takes you out of it because no adult yeah. says that like that's yeah. just that's just the way it and is that's something that's totally missing from certain religious films like i mean 
I, I <laughs> let's name names like God's not dead. I, I mean, I I cannot think of a more like childish in in a pejorative sense, a childish take yeah. on faith. Yep. I mean, th I think that this has done a fantastic job of just maturely telling a story where faith is a central theme, but is not, you know, being beaten into the the audience or shoved down our throats. I, it's, I think it did a fantastic job. I agree 100%. Uh, so uh, I, we don't normally give ratings, but if you gave a rating, what would you give it? Um. I said that it would be a nine because I really can't think of any criticisms of it. But at the same time, if I were to say 10, that would be like the perfect movie. Yeah. No movie can top this. So I'm going to say nine. I am going to go ahead and give it an eight. Uh, I don't know if it's a, I would eight uh, bordering on nine uh, yeah. for me. This is one of those things. It was such a, it was such a breath of fresh air. Um, uh, I go into a lot of movies these days dreading what I'm going to see. This is more like, I'm just not, it's just not my genre. So I, I had less expectations, which is kind of a, a great thing. You go into it. Like uh, I do, I did have the expectation where it was like, they're like, uh, that's not very preachy. I was like, well, it better stick to that then. And it did, it was not super preachy. Mm -hmm. So uh, the fact that this movie gets uh, both a thumbs up from both, someone of uh of catholic faith and somebody who is currently not on that journey i think that says a lot about the movie and uh hopefully mark Wahlberg and uh and mel gibson can find more stories like this maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be about the faith but about interesting stories about extraordinary people and that's what you focus on right telling stories about those people there's no question that we need more movies like this and i think this the sad reality is that we're just not going to be getting them because yep. it, this, At least not good this ones. movie had to be funded out of out of their pockets pretty much yep. like it's a coincidence alone that they had sony producing this like he he had to pay for this out of his own money because uh, not they all don't of want... it but so he he definitely had to pay more like he he had to put way more well, into it a as huge, producer a huge amount yeah it, and it's just, it's simply because they don't want stories like this to be amplified. Yep. That's like I said, it, like, it, it's, it goes against their worldviews. So it's uh, all we can only hope that uh, they focus. And even like for me, it's, it's got nothing to do with that. I was like, I just want them to go back to focusing on good storytelling just, yeah, uh, about, with, about with classic people, themes. Not ideas getting beaten into the crowd. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, guys, uh, I think that's uh, about as g good of a recommendation as you're ever going to get for a movie like this. Father Stu is out in theaters nationwide right now. We went and saw it uh, in the reclining chairs at, at our it's local nice. theater. We didn't have time to get any junk food, though. It broke my heart that I we couldn't get... We walked in the second it started. It was, yeah, literally the Columbia logo was on the screen, yeah. so it was the best timing in the world. But, like, for me, not being able to get my <laughs> my my uh, fries with cheese uh, kind of... Think uh, of it as a little ascetic practice. Yes. There, you're <laughs> you're entering into the suffering of uh, stew. A bit of fasting on, on my part. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> All right, uh, Mary. Let everyone know where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Closer Kitty. We guys, you can find me on Instagram uh, at Brett Dasik. Go ahead and like the YouTube channel, please. Uh, subscribe there, like the videos, leave comments on the videos. Uh, in the description box, we'll give you a link to the Spotify playlist, which has all of the full episodes, not the review, just the reviews, but the episodes of the podcast that comes out Monday through Friday. Uh, the whole podcast, start to finish, it's the best way to listen to all our banter with our guests that come in each and every day. Uh, and we're also on Amazon Music, on Apple Podcasts, and on Pandora. And on social media, you can find pop culture crisis on let's see we're on twitter at pop culture underscore show we are on instagram at pop culture crisis pod and then we were also on facebook and on tiktok at pop culture crisis and we will be back with more reviews coming soon talk to you then guys bye bye thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.